Musical results are out for the January 2020 contest, so it's time to get into the walkthrough. Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and today we're going to be doing problem 3 on Brawn. One of you guys suggested I do this one, and so I'm going to be live solving it for you guys, let's see how it goes. Bessie is running a race of length K. K is less than or equal than 10 in the 9, so that's kind of big, so we're probably not going to be able to do anything that's not math related. She starts running at a speed of 0 meters per second. At a given second, she could either increase her speed by 1, or keep it unchanged, or decrease by 1. For example, in the first second, she can increase her speed to 1 meters per second and run 1 meter, or keep it at 0 meters per second and run 0 meters, okay? Bessie's speed can never drop below 0. Bessie will always have to run toward the finish line, and she wants to finish after an integer amount of seconds. Furthermore, she doesn't want to be running too quickly, at the finish line. At the instant in time when Bessie finishes running K meters, she wants the speed she has been traveling to be no more than X meters per second. Bessie wants to know how quickly she can finish the race for different values of X. Okay. So X is 10 to the 5, and then N is going to be 1000. So basically, we're, we could do N squared, but we can only do x of 1. So we have to be able to solve each of the things pretty fast. Alright, let's just see what happens if she keeps increasing her speed. So t is equal to 0 or speed is 0, right? However, she could increase it to 1 or decrease it to negative 1, but she would never want to go negative, so that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it can never drop below 0, so she's probably going to go to 1. So let's say she keeps it at 0, then she's going to be at 0 at t equals 1. But if she made her speed to be 1, then she'd go from 0 to 1. Okay. So now right here, her velocity is 1, or I don't think draw, draw like a tree. So 0 could go to 1 or to 0. Then from 1, she could go to 3, she could go to 2, or she could go to 1. And then here, he could go, she could go to 0 or she could, he could go to 1. And this is kind of hard actually, damn. Well basically the idea is we want our velocity versus time graph to look something like this, okay? So basically she wants to keep increasing her speed as much as possible and then decrease as much as possible until she ends up with some x velocity. And then in a velocity versus time graph, your area under the curve is going to be the distance you travel, so you want the area to be exactly k. Okay, so let's just say this is y, and then this is going to be y. Wait, so at t equals 0, could she start with 1 meter per second? Okay, so she starts with the speed of 1. So your distance is going to be 1 for t is equal to 1, and then plus 2, plus 3, so on and so forth, all the way to y. So that's just y times y plus 1 over 2. And then we know that the sum of under this thing is going to be x plus y, which is the sum of the first and last, and then we had to multiply by the number of pairs. Because this is kind of like the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 to n. That's what, I'm trying to, that's what my formula is. Okay, so x plus y times y minus x plus 1, because it's inclusive and then divided by 2. And then we basically want this to be less than x, less than k, because we don't want to overshoot. But if we undershoot, then it's okay? Actually, no, but you want to do it in an integer amount of seconds. Well, anyway, so this is the optimal, right? But we could, huh. Well, let's see if we can simplify this nonsense. So if we expand it out, what do we get? Okay, I don't even know whether this is optimal. This might not be optimal, let's see. No, I don't think this is optimal, honestly, because she has to reach there at an integer time. Well, okay, we could also do it, like we know that her average velocity times the time it takes her is going to be equal to k. So if we want t to be an integer, then we basically have to have v average is a multiple or a divisor of k. And then v average is going to be like your 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus whatever your velocity are all the way to whatever we get to to get to k or x and then we divide by t. Which is basically that's reducing to the fact that we need to get that this sums to k. That doesn't help at all. What the heck? Okay, wait. Hmm. Why don't we binary search on how long it takes? So let's say that we fix what t is and t is a constant. Then we just had to figure out if it was possible to do it. Well, okay, we know that as x gets bigger, right? Your amount of time that it's gonna take you is guaranteed to decrease. That help us in any way? Okay, why don't we just find start by finding like the optimal way to just run if you didn't have any x, right? Then you just start at 1, then you go to 2, then you go to 3, and then you keep going until you can't add the next one, otherwise you'd go over your k. So you go from 1 to n, right? And then the leftover is going to be less than n plus 1. 
So whatever's left over, we just duplicate the line. Let's say that like we're missing three, like these are three, and we're missing three to get to k. Then we just duplicate this line. Okay. So basically, the number of lines here, which is just going to be n plus one, is the optimal way to do it. That's the best time you could do if you have no x whatsoever. Then how could we do it so that if we do have an x, then we could do it? What? Huh? Oh wait, that is perfect. Oh my god, that makes so much more sense. So we were on the right track. Okay. So this is also how we do. It. Okay. So we had this idea, right? That we have to go up and then down and then get there, right? So basically, if we have this as x, we're basically gonna find the biggest y such that our formula doesn't go over k, right? And then once we do that, we can just duplicate whichever like lines we want that would get us to the end. And the minimum number of lines we would have to add is like two. And there's no way you could do better than that. So this should be fine. So let's write our equation again: is y times y plus one over two is uh, plus x plus y over no, but we already, okay, so x plus y minus 1 times y minus x, okay, over 2. Okay, so this is our equation, let's simplify it. Okay, so basically, if we want to find out what our maximum y could possibly be, our maximum y is just going to be y squared is less than 2k plus x squared minus x over 2. And then we just square root that to find what our y is. So basically the biggest thing that we could add in to our thing is going to be y, right? If we want to add in more than y, we could add in a y plus 1 and then we could add in another y so that it goes up and back down. So in essence, if the leftover space to get to k is less than or equal to y, then we add 1 to the number of things we got. If it's more than y, then we have to add 2. If it's equal to k already, then we don't have to add any more lines, so we're good. Alright, let's code this boy up. Alright, so we have all our fn's and fs, then we got a c and all our nonsense. And we gotta define them first. How are you supposed to read things we don't have to find them? God dang it. And then we'll do a for loop and read in the rest. Alright, so basically we're casting to an int, so it should just round down for us. And then we do, what is it, k minus this. And then we gotta apply our formula again, and then see what it is. So this is our formula, so we'll plug that in. Alright, so now we have to do our cases. So if k minus k attempt is less than zero, less than or is equal equal to zero, then we just see out the number our y plus x minus y minus one. Or no. So there's y lines and then there's another x minus y line. Y minus x lines. Okay. And then if it's less than or equal to y, then we can just add in another bar, just one more bar, so we'll just add one to this. And then lastly, we could just see out the remaining, or this plus two. All right, let's try. Did it work? So one is six, two is five, three is five. Oh, it worked, yes. Yes, let's go, very nice, okay. Well, I mean, it hasn't worked yet, but let us test it. Make it all F in, then we shall submit. All right, the moment of truth, will it work? Please work, come on, I did such hard work on this one. Oh, very nice, very nice. Oh, what, no. What? No, the solution's wrong. Okay, wait, let us check what we did wrong. Well, basically, if x is big enough, then it doesn't matter. Oh, so we had to first do casework when x is greater? Okay, wait, wait. Let's try the case where we just go straight up and x is not a limiting factor. So at the very beginning, we'll just try to figure out, like, if we just go straight up, what our thing will be, like how many numbers that'll take, and what we'll end on, and if x is ever greater than what our, we'll end on for a straight up triangle, then it doesn't matter. Okay. So what's the formula for a triangle? So a triangular number is basically gonna be n times n plus one over two, and we want this to be less than k. And then basically it's just gonna end on n. So if x is greater than n, then we only have to take n plus one bars. Well, essentially, we could just go from like while n is n times n plus one is less than two k. We could just do that. Well, we'll call it like p. All right. So basically, what I did is I said that n p is one, so we start from one and we keep going up until we reach the biggest triangle we can make. And then, if we haven't reached it, then I say reach is equal to. And then, if we've reached k with a triangle, then I set reach is equal to true. 
And if it's not true, that means we gotta add in another bar later. So, right here, we're just gonna check if x is equal, if x is greater than p. And then if we've already reached k, then we wanna just print out p. Otherwise, we wanna print out p plus one. So we gotta add in the other bar. And then in this case, we just wanna skip over the rest of the stuff because that's all only if x is smaller than p, or greater than equal. Okay. And now this should work. Oh, whoops. Wait, what? Oh. So we're messing up at x equals three, or which means it's less than or equal to. Oh, this is not right. P times P. Nice. There we go. Very nice. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's how we do it. Okay, this one's kind of like a more mathy thing. You just had to notice that the best way to do it is to go up and then go down. Like, I realized that in the beginning, but just realizing that it's actually the most optimal is kind of hard, but once you realize it, it's pretty good. Alrighty, that's all I got. If you guys want more of these Deep Go Craft Cards, just let me know and give me some problem suggestions because I'm going to make a lot more of these Deep Go videos for this. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.